Will everyone please join me in Gasho and recite the Nembutsu with me? Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namanda, Samanda, Samanda, Samanda. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our last Sunday service for the month of October. Um, I don't know about you all, but I think it's been pretty chilly the past couple of evenings. And you probably noticed that uh, we had to salt the sidewalks uh, last night to make sure that no one slipped in on the way into temple today. I think it's actually a little warm in the hondo. How many of you think it's too warm? <laughs> nope, okay, all right. maybe it's just me then. So today, I would like to wish you all a happy Halloween because unfortunately, Halloween this year does not fall on a Sunday service. <laughs> so uh, we all wonder to ourselves, right? Um, you know, where, you know, Halloween, what do we do, right? We all dress up as a character, we dress up in a costume. And for those of you who are age appropriate, you go out and you do trick or treating, right? Uh, in some of your neighborhoods to get candy from your neighbors. And, um, you know, it, it's a very, uh, it, it was always a holiday I enjoyed as, as a child. Uh, and many adults uh, enjoy Halloween now. Uh, I noticed actually one of my friends posted that they went to a Halloween party in Little Tokyo. And interestingly enough, the huge ground that they used to have the dance party for our Halloween was right next to our one of our sister temples, uh, Nishihonganji or uh, Los Angeles Betsuin. They had this huge quad area that can be used for large events like that. So if you're ever in Los Angeles during Halloween time, I would highly recommend uh, going to Halloween in Little Tokyo, which is right next to our uh, sister temple. But you know, where does this tradition actually come from? You know, where, where does this idea of Halloween and where does, you know, doing all of this, like we, and, and it, by the way, I love all the costumes coming in here, by the way, I see Mandalorians, I see, uh, well, I, I, I think I'm, you know, I hope they're paying you uh, <laughs> for, for that, uh, for the progressive, uh, you know, advertising progressive insurance and everything, because I'm with Safeco, but I guess I better switch to progressive, right? But where does this tradition come from? You know, where does Halloween come from? Well, the interesting thing is that it has its roots in ancient Celtic uh, rituals that celebrated harvest time. And uh, you know what's interesting is is they would have these celebrations and they would do interesting rituals. But funnily enough, the meaning behind it, especially for dressing up like we do in costumes, especially when the costumes are scary, they're actually meant to scare away the ghosts and the evil spirits that would prevent the bad harvest. So when you see people dressing up in scary costumes back in this day, they actually were meant to scare the ghosts, right? Or to scare the evil spirits. So that's, I think, an interesting irony to this, but it actually links into the Dharma talk that I will be talking about today. So, you know, while today, you know, costumes are meant to scare folks in the, you know, like, you know, you know, we kind of like want to scare each other or impress each other with the costumes that we're wearing. We see, uh, you know, uh, these two are just as witches, right? You know, they're, they were originally um, designed to scare away ghosts. But then, you know, we, we often see images like, you know, as Halloween comes around, we often see images around like stores and um, area, like uh, schools and areas that show a lot of, um, you know, a lot of images that are associated with death. And of course, as we all know, um, this year after Halloween, uh, is the other uh, holiday, Dia de los Muertos, right? The celebration of the dead or the day of the dead. And, uh, you know, we see things like ghosts and skeletons and even zombies, right? We have uh, all of these images that are associated with the concept of death. And so, you know, and also, of course, along with Halloween images and scary images to look at, we also know that there are Halloween movies. This is also the time to watch scary movies. I mean, some people love watching scary movies all year round, but as this holiday comes closer, we have you know images or we have a uh, movie, scary movies that come out as well. Uh, Dharma school students, how many of you 
know all all of these Halloween movies that that are okay very good all right just want to make sure that you're <laughs> so of course one of my favorite actually ties in with both uh, Halloween and Christmas and that's the nightmare before Christmas but for Dharma school students and parents alike if there's one Halloween movie that I would recommend for all of you to watch it's this one how many of you have seen this movie before the Halloween tree no, ooh, that's great. Okay, this is a movie. Uh, so if you have a pic uh, camera or, or a camera phone, get out your picture now because this is a classic Halloween cartoon that I watched. Look at all the, they're getting out their phones right now. <laughs> Good. Um, the, you know, this is a classic Halloween uh, uh, movie that I watched uh, that talks about the origins of Halloween going all the way from ancient Egypt to the Celtic traditions also to other traditions as well that, that have this interest like you know, Dia de los Muertos and um, other, you know, other aspects of Halloween. And it's a, it's a quest too. They're trying to save their friend Pip um, from being collected by, uh, by the soul collector. And, the, um, and it's a very, it's a very uh, beautiful uh, uh, cartoon actually that shows the meaning of friendship, the meaning of Halloween and not to be scared of concepts like death or the concepts of you know, the darkness that are often associated with Halloween. So if you're able to get a copy of this or find a way to watch it digitally, I would highly recommend this cartoon for uh, our Dharma school students to watch. Now to Buddhism, here's a question. Do we as Buddhists celebrate Halloween? You know, again, this is a question we get often as well, right? Like we, we, we get asked this question of, you know, do we celebrate Christmas? Do we celebrate, uh, you know, do we celebrate, you know, the major holidays that have to do kind of with Christianity, right? And in some ways we do, and in some ways we don't. But do we celebrate Halloween? Well, first off, yes, we do, because, well, look at the, look at the congregation today. You know, so many of the groups of folks are dressed up in costumes. So how could we not celebrate Halloween? We are observing the holiday right now, it, you know, with, you know, people all dressed up. So we definitely can. Um, for all of you in uh, costumes right now, how many of you go trick-or-treating in your neighborhoods? Okay, good. Yes, you go trick-or-treating. Very good. So you do celebrate Halloween in, in that way. We may not celebrate it in the way that it used to be celebrated, right, where we would, you know, have these big harvest festivals and, uh, you know, dress up and things like that. But, um, you know, you know, but you know, we still celebrate the hol the holiday as the holiday comes around. When you also think about it, um, our holiday where we remember our past loved ones, or when the bridges between the spirit world or the the world of the dead and the world of the living that are bridged is also culturally speaking what Obon is as well, when you think about it. So and if you, one could argue that our Halloween is sort of celebrated in August or in, in Japan, as opposed to October. But you know, that's another story for another time. But guess what? Today, because it is Halloween, I decided I'd like to share some scary images for the Dharma school students to see that are associated with Buddhism, because we in Buddhism also have some scary images or what looks like scary images as well. So, you know, they look scary. So, who? this is an interesting image. Does anyone in the congregation know who this is? Mm. Okay, so this is, this is a very, this is what looks like a scary image, but um, this is actually, you know, who is the scary looking guy? And I know, I'm sorry, the, word, the lettering's a little bit small there, but, even though he looks scary, his what? Well, first off, his name is Fudo Myo. Okay, Dharma school students, I want you to say that with me, okay? Fudo Myo. Say it. When you go to Japan and you go to a lot of temples, not necessarily Nishihonganji ones, you will see images of the statue. Fudo Myo. And he's holding a sword with his right hand and he's holding a rope with his left. So um, he is one of the wrathful deities of Buddhism, but believe it or not, although he may look scary, although he has kind of a scary image or a scary visage on his face, right? A scary visage, he's actually good. Oops, there we go. 
while he may look scary, he's actually good. He represents the turning of wrath and anger into peace and calm. He also represents the steadfastness to the Dharma. So he's there to represent the unwavering path of the Dharma. So he may look scary, but he's actually good. Isn't that interesting? And this actually links back to the original idea of when you wear a scary costume, you're trying to scare away the evil spirits, not necessarily scare each other. It's the same thing with Fudo Myo. He actually is supposed to represent expelling the sort of the evilness or the, the badness from us by scaring it away. And he actually keeps Mara away with his sword. So that is the interesting thing about Fudo Myo is that he looks scary, but he's actually not scary. He's actually a good being, not, a, not an evil being to be feared, at least by us. Ooh, who is this? This is another scary looking guy. You know, uh, and ooh, what's even more is he has multiple arms. He kind of has multiple faces. He's riding a bull. He looks kind of like an ogre, right? This is some scary imagery, maybe. But his name is Dai Toku Myo O. Okay, so once again, uh, Dharma school students, who was the first, who was the first deity? Fudo. Myo -o, very good. This one is Dai Toku Myo. -o. And believe it or not, this image or this uh, entity is actually more related to us as Jodo Shinchu Buddhists as well. Guess what? Dai Toku Myo -o is, in Chinese and Shingon Buddhism, he is the wrathful personification of Amida Buddha. Isn't that interesting? So you see, you know, when you look at Amida Buddha, when you look at the statue that we have here, right, it's, you know, the statue of peace and calm and, you know, you know, and, and kind of kindness, right? But, it believe, but in other forms of Buddhism, he also, Amida Buddha also has the wrathful side or the, um, the wrathful image of, of Dai Toku Myo, and he looks like this. He has the various faces, the scary looking face, riding a bull, has multiple arms with multiple tools. Once again, this image is not meant to scare us, but it's actually meant for us to appreciate the hard work and the various forms that Amida Buddha and the other Buddhist and the other Buddhas have to take in order to protect us or in order to keep away the evil entities, correct? So this is something that I think is uh, very uh, beneficial to actually see is that you know, we have things in Buddhism that look kind of scary, but in actuality, they're not supposed to be feared, at least by us. They're supposed to be seen and respected. And you know, again, looks can, you know, looks can be deceiving. But one thing that we can say is that whether it looks scary or not, it's very impressive. The, you know, it's a very impressive work of art to show this type of you know, imagery in Buddhism. And so, you know, this is, this is actually, you know, how I think, you know, we in the Buddhist world can, you know, see, right, um, that there are multiple sides to who we are, right? We have our kind and peaceful side, but there are also times we have sort of an angry side and a wrathful side. But then for Halloween, we dress up and, in a way that we can express ourselves. We dress up in a way that we can make ourselves look like um, you know, either who we want to be, like a Marvel superhero, or something funny to make people laugh, or something, you know, uh, to impress people. I've seen, I've gone to anime conventions where people have put a whole lot of work into their costumes. But when you look at these images, right, when you look at some of these images of, like, the wrathful deities, right, what's going on here? Just like the spirit of Halloween, it's trying to actually tell us that while, you know, these images may look scary and sometimes they, they can be scary, fear and being afraid is not always a bad thing or at least not always an emotion we should, you know, um, an, an emotion that we should prevent or avoid. It's a natural thing that comes to us from time to time. And this is actually, I think, why Halloween and uh, even the scary images in Buddhism are so important for us as, you know, as Buddhists as well. It's that, you know, it's, it's something to help us explore our emotions and to explore a, another, sometimes even darker sense of 
how things are or the spiritual world in that, in that regard. So with this imagery, I hope that, um, I hope I didn't scare you all too much with some of these images, but at the same time, I hope that you learned a little bit, some, a li learned a little something that Halloween can mean a little bit more than just dressing up, eating candy and going to parties, which is, are all great and fun, but to learn the deeper spiritual meaning behind some of these holidays as well. So I certainly hope you enjoyed some of these images. Um, I hope you, uh, um, I look forward to seeing you at the party after the adult service. And when you all please join me in Gashou. And repeat the Nebutsu with me. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Nam Mandats. Nam Mandats. Nam Mandats. My life has now reached the fullness of its years. It is certain that I will go to birth in the pure land before you. So without fail, I will await you there. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Good morning again, everyone. I hope you enjoyed some of the cool images that I uh, displayed of some of maybe the darker side of, of Buddhism. Uh, but, you know, when you think about this holiday of Halloween, you know, it really goes to show you, um, I think just as we as a culture or a society can embrace some of the darker aspects of what, will, what would be considered darker in terms of our fears and the things that we dread in the world, right? So, of course, one of the biggest fears is death, right? You know, we as... Uh, we as uh, human beings, right, fear the unknown and fear the, uh, you know, the darkness or fear the end of things, right? But at the same time, you know, we also have these celebrations to, um, in a sense, embrace, not just embrace those fears, but try to alternate our perspective on it a little bit as well. You know, we do this in certain ways, whether it be Dia de los Muertos or Obon, right, where it's a time that we come together but we also have funerals, memorial services, and things of that nature to lean upon each other when these fears you know, come into play. But isn't it interesting that no matter how much we grow up, you know, uh, I'm, some people you know, still consider me to be young. I don't know why. <laughs> I, I say I'm 34 and they, I still get the, oh, you're still young. And I'm certain many of you are thinking that right now. But you know, what's interesting is you know, when we're from a young age, like, you know, a uh, uh, child in elementary school, all the way into our adulthood, you know, we, we still have this fear, um, uh, this, this kind of fear that we feel. Now, what we are afraid of definitely becomes different. It, it becomes different depending on where you are in the world, of course, but, you know, just in a standard way or in a general way, when you're young, you probably have to remember, or you, have, you, you, know, you probably were afraid of the closet or what was under your bed at night, right? Or you know, maybe the things that go bump in the night or the, the darkness outside. Uh, you, know, you probably, uh, and as, if you're a parent now, you probably had to comfort your child uh, every now and then if they came into your bedroom at night and said, I had a nightmare or you know, they're crying at night, or you know, they, they're afraid they probably heard something in their closet or they heard something outside. So being the good parent that you are, you go outside and you check to make sure that nothing's there and you go back inside and reassure them that there is nothing to fear. But then as we get older, as we grow up, our fears change a little bit. When we get into our you know, teens, right? When we get into school, you know, when we get into high school, we start, becoming afraid of, will I have friends? Will I, you know, will I be popular? Will I not be popular? Will people uh, like me? Or even will I get into the school I'm applying to? Will I, uh, you know, or will I be able to date the person that I, you know, that I have a crush on? Or does the person I have a crush on notice me? We're, we have that fear as well. When we, you know, graduate from college, of course, there's that big fear, that big fear of the unknown. Will I get a job? <laughs> Right. Well, I actually have a career. Can I move out of my parents house? And, you know, can I have, you know, or will I have this sense of independence? Right. Do I have this? 
you know, or, you know, all of these, you know, all of these things are, <laughs> sorry, and, and, you know, we, you know, all of these things are afraid. And then, of course, when we get into our 30s, well, I have enough money to buy a house. Well, you know, am I a good, and this is, per, this is me talking personally, by the way, am I a good husband, <laughs> right? I, you know, all of these things are afraid, and I, I are, we have fears of. I'm not certain, of course, of, um, I'm not in my 40s yet, so I'll let you know when I'm in my 40s. I'll give this Dharma talk again when I'm in my 50s, and then <laughs> we'll have an, uh, but, you know, I'm certain many of you who are either in your 50s or maybe even beyond will probably talk about some of the fears that you have as well. You know, Buddhism is here to, you know, comfort us in these fears, but not necessarily say fears go away, right? You know, we have this sense that Sometimes that, oh, okay, if I, you know, join a Buddhist temple, if I go into the Buddhist teachings, if I study the Buddhist teachings, then all these fears will go away, right? You know, I will be able to live without fear. You know, one of the beautiful things about Jodo Shinshu Buddhism is that, once again, it's a Buddhism that accepts us for who we are and all of our faults as well. All of our fears, all of our anxieties, everything. And you know, again, it's not that these fears will go away, right? You know, there will, be, there will be times where these fears will come up, pivotal moments in our lives will happen, and, you know, we will experience these anxieties. And yet at the same time, we can still come back to temple. We can still know that we are embraced by the wisdom and compassion that is Amida Buddha, that is wisdom and compassion of the Buddha of infinite light and life you know, then we are able to feel this wonderful sense of comfort. What's wonderful about, you know, all of this is that at the very end of all things, we all have this deeper knowledge, especially as adults, that someday we are not going to be here forever, you know, we are not going to be here. Um, you know, we all know this intellectually, of course, right, that we all are on the same path, you know, towards the, in a sense, an, an inevitable end. So with this in mind, it's not that we are pessimists or that we are nihilists, that we don't think that anything matters, but we are able to live with a real sense of authenticity, with a real sense of realness. And not just that, but also appreciate the people and the comfort that we have with all of our fellow Dharma travelers, right? These fears will never go away. Sometimes when I'm laying in bed at night, there is a part of me that goes, there is a part of my mind that goes into this inevitability that sometimes thinks, wow, there will be a day that I will no longer be here. And then not necessarily am I afraid of, you know, that reality, but then I kind of wonder, will I be remembered? Will people still love me after I'm gone? Will I, will I have kids who will still hold memorial services? Will I still, you know, have all of these, you know, well, I, you know, I, will I still have people who will visit my gravesite on Memorial Day, right? I have all these anxieties as well. And it's interesting because, you know, it still, you know, links back to this sense of kleshas or bonno or, um, or our imperfections as humans, our fears, our sufferings. And yet at the same time, Buddhism has the perfect message for all of us that, you know, it acknowledges these fears that we have. It acknowledges this base instinct that we have to survive and to live a long and healthy life as much as possible. And then, of course, at the same time, realizing that we do come to an end at some point. And this is where Shinran Shonin, our founder, comes in. I feel like he has this perfect message of comfort for all of us. First, acknowledging the absolute humanity that he was, you know, that he has been born with out of eons of karmic conditions. And yet at the same time, realizing assuredly that Amida Buddha, you know, Amida Buddha unfailingly uh, uh, saves all sentient beings so they are born in the pure land, that they are born in the realm of infinite wisdom and compassion. And this is why I love this letter from The Lamp for the Latter Ages, which is a letter that he wrote to one of his followers. My life has now reached the fullness of its years. It is certain that I will go to birth in the pure land before you. So without fail, I will await you there. It really provides a sense of comfort to the person who wrote to him, in my personal opinion. 
he really uh, assures this person that once again, death is not something to be feared and it's not something to be like avoided. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, we should all of course try to be safe and live our lives as practically as possible, but that we are also, you know, uh, that our afterlife is also certainly assured for, that death does not necessarily mean the end of all things. I think actually um, another beautiful, uh, beautiful, I think poignant and on and uh, just on on the level uh, spiritual statement came from the movie star Keanu Reeves. He was actually doing an interview with uh, Stephen Colbert. And you know they got into the topic of spirituality, and when uh, Stephen Colbert finally prodded Keanu Reeves and asked him, you know, well, what what do you think happens after we die? Keanu Reeves thought about it for just a second, and then he said, "I know that the ones who love us will miss us." And Stephen Colbert had no response to that. He just shook his hand, and you know, and then it was it was a wonderful moment for us. This comfort comes as well, knowing that all beings are embraced by Amida Buddha's wisdom and compassion and that we will be born there as well. So, of course, we will never live without a sense of fear or anxiety. I mean, not saying that we're constantly living that, but, you know, these fears and anxieties will come up from time to time. We will have this sense of fear uh, when pivotal moments pop up. You know, when we, um, you know, and, you know, when we have to confront something that we, you know, don't want to confront, we will have a sense of fear when, you know, a letter comes that has some type of important information. But in that sense, we are also Buddhist in that we are able to take refuge in the teachings as well. Not so we can expel the fear from our body but to realize that there are other you know there are other avenues of comfort besides just trying to power through things by our by ourselves knowing that we also have a wonderful community that we can all lean upon and support each other with also goes a long way in helping with the sphere so in the subject of halloween i felt it was very important for us to talk about the subject of fear and how we live with it on a day-to-day -day basis not constantly but it will come up from time to time. So as we continue to traverse this path that we call life, let us remember that while we are, well, it's okay to be afraid and to fear this emotion of fear, that we also turn, do our best to turn to the teachings of Shakyamuni Buddha and Master Shinran to help us alleviate some of these fears. In closing, will you all please join me in Gasho? My life has now reached the fullness of its years. It is certain that I will go to birth in the Pure Land before you. So without fail, I will await you there. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu.